this week we right from under you. we're on the bench and we're talking about rng this week i want to talk about rng and it doesn't necessarily have to be only in video games that's kind of what i'm going to refer to it in um i am curious to kind of explore maybe other sides of it but uh yeah i was talking earlier today with my brother we were talking about rng in games and it just i mean i'll just lay out like the gist of it and then you can kind of give your thoughts so um there's a lot of games that have randomness right that's what rng is random numbers generator that's what it stands for um there's a lot of randomness when it comes to drops and things so for instance monster hunter that's a big one yeah terraria uh even games like overwatch because it's not it's not always the same there's different layers uh but for instance if we if we were to go to overwatch a game a lot of people at least used to play i don't know how many people play it these days uh overwatch back in the day had skins not many <laughs> Uh, uh, Overwatch has skins, right? And in order to, because let's say you're your free to play player, you don't want to spend money on the game. If you want these skins, you have to play the game, put in the time, get the loot boxes. Okay, the loot boxes are entirely random. So you open them. It could be a sticker. It could be a costume. It could be a, a, a like a voice line, whatever. And if you get a repeat it gives you currency, in-game currency, like gold or whatever. And you can use that gold to buy certain costumes. But you have to open probably a lot of loot boxes because they keep adding skins to the game. So you can't get repeats because you keep getting new stuff that you don't want for characters you don't play, which is a problem in and of its own. But you get you get the money and you want to buy the skin and you find out that that skin is only available during certain months of the year for certain events and that event oh that event was when the game launched so it's never going to be available again so you cannot buy this skin because you did not roll it in the loot box when it was available and it's just a big problem and uh, you know this bleeds into other games like i mentioned like monster hunter terraria other those other games um and i just don't know why there isn't a way because i it bothered me so much that you couldn't just buy the skin like why can't i just pay five dollars to get the the skin i want for my main character i would be so down to do that um so yeah i just want to i i think it's stupid there should always my philosophy is there should always be a guarantee to get something i think rng is a good thing but not when it's the only way to get something um so yeah, I just I want to I want to hear your take on it. <laughs> okay, um, so I guess what you're talking about is, if I'm understanding this correctly, simulated chance in entertainment. Sure. Yes. Okay, because RNG is that's essentially what its role is. Because simulated chance can go really good. There are RNG elements for like in some open world games um or different kinds of maps will have rng right like randomly generated worlds. put into it mm -hmm. yeah to kind of determine what really i've if i remember correctly minecraft is like that it's just every time you load up into a world it's different yeah in fact i, I don't know how much minecraft loads right but like when you load into a world and i know that like the xbox version when the xbox 360 version came out it was like actually there was only a certain amount you could explore, but in most cases for Minecraft, like when you keep, if you can keep walking one direction forever and it'll keep randomly generating more and more world, but yeah, it's always random. Like if, if you were to keep exploring, it would keep generating new map that is not yet. Like it's, it's entirely random. Hmm. So, so I think in a way simulated chance or RNG it has definitely its uses in the case of trying to entice someone to spend more money that's not always a very enticing concept to me especially in the realm right. of uh i mean i think it's one thing to have to kind of rng yourself into a skin but it's another thing to not even be able to like access a character Unless yeah. you RNG roll okay. into that character. Yes. League of Legends is often like that, where you you kind of have to roll a champion that you want to play, or you spend money, or you yes. play for a month. Yes. Gotcha games, like Genshin, Genshin Impact. Like, yes. I locking, locking content like that, because it's one thing to do skins. You're totally right. And it's another thing to do content. Um, 
But my, my main point here, because I think RNG is a good thing. I want to make that very clear. I just don't like it when it's the only way to obtain something. Like you have to roll right. Mm. Because for me, how it should be is it's like there is RNG. You can roll and spend money to roll more. That I feel like that's a fine thing, but there should also be another option to be like you are guaranteed this character. You're just going to have to put in this much work. It's like a lot more work, but it is guaranteed, like 100% guaranteed. I'm totally fine. With you know, you, it's interesting... Oh man, the train. It's it'll come around. It'll come back. <laughs> Continue your point. Um, I just because like if we go to Monster Hunter, um, I have like I've I've been because you know they're shutting down the 3ds servers soon, uh, online servers, which is very sad. Rest in peace, 3ds. Um, and so I've been playing through Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate with a friend lately, and you know, that game, like the newer Monster Hunters are way more uh, friendly when it comes to quality of life and stuff, which that's a whole topic on its own. Um, but in these older ones, especially, because I think the newer ones still have this problem where you can fight a monster, which, you know, fighting a monster is kind of hard. It's demanding. Uh, it takes a lot of resources and prep sometimes. And each hunt. Oh, ta- I takes... got my point. Uh, yeah. Finish. Yeah. It. Each, each right. hunt. Yeah, that's came back. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Um, each hunt in Monster Hunter takes like 30 minutes to an hour. And you could fight this really tough monster and spend all this time, all this resource, and you don't get the thing you need. Like, let's say you're missing one thing. Like, you're, you're like you fought this guy 10 times and you're, all you're missing is a stinking wing talon or something. And he's just not dropping it. Because it's random what he drops when you carve him, when you capture him. It's random what rewards you get. It's random what he drops. You are not guaranteed any of the specific drops. And there's no, because for me, it's like, why can't I fight this guy 12 times? Which, think about that. That's like almost 12 hours I'm putting in to this one monster so I can make one piece of gear. And I want this one thing that I'm missing. Why can't I take all the excess stuff that I'm getting, all the other pieces, and be like, oh, if you have 10 of every other piece, you can craft it into whatever piece you want or something. Like, I just don't understand why the game doesn't allow you to do that. And there's so many other games like that, too, where it's like, no, you need to keep grinding or you need to keep spending money. You need to keep rolling. There's no way to guarantee it. You could spend 100 plus hours trying to get this thing and you are never guaranteed it. I just feel like that's absurd. It's just dumb. So, as you're bringing this stuff up, it it's not necessarily to my original point. I was going to ask about drop rates um, and how you felt about that, but I felt like I got my answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, it often some of the things you're kind of speaking to, I think, is a lot in the realm of just kind of at least when we're talking about RNG in video games, it sounds a lot like you're talking about like bloatedness in video games padded game time uh okay where where it's just it's a mechanic that's kind of it's a similar situation to me that i feel like is in games like starfield or uh even i would say tears of the kingdom breath of the wild at least have an element of this um, I have felt this in Hogwarts Legacy. Destiny had this. Destiny, uh, dude, I grinded. A... I grinded so many hours for you. Uh, they were called exotics in that game. I was gonna say uniques because I've been playing Diablo Four. Essentially the same thing. Uh, getting exotics in Destiny, bro. So many hours trying to get certain exotics that I never got. Never got them, and I put hundreds well, of hours. So it's that's exactly the thing. Is it's just this it's this mechanic that people or this mindset that people have of they like want they want you to play the game a lot and spend a lot of time on this game there are ways to do that in the history of gaming that doesn't revolve requiring someone to spend 30 to 40 minutes on one mission for a chance for a chance to get something i think of uh games uh, they don't necessarily have rng but games like Cult classic games like Luigi's Mansion or right um, Mario sixty four. I mean Mario sixty four. Ha- the original one. Halo. Yeah, original Halo. Uh, I mean, would would Skyrim count at this point? 
Or are, are I would not, no. Skyrim old? has some bloatedness. <laughs> Skyrim still has some bloatedness. I still feel but like these, it's a classic, the games I'm but... mentioning are. But no, no, it is. You're, you're right. What, what I, it's not serving your point. I, I see. The point that I'm trying to make here is like these games have nothing outside of simply just entertainment in a in a bubble and one of the things that you really enjoy doing is replaying that experience having that experience and i think that too many games uh much to the effect of we were talking about games getting too big they're just as bloated uh it's almost like busy work in, in video games to keep you occupied when it doesn't have to be that way. And it's interesting that you mentioned Skyrim because I feel like Skyrim has some RNG in it as well of some kind of randomly generated map assets. I don't know if it's all specifically loaded mm-hmm. in or like you never know when a thief is going to be here or there. Or right, right. But again, I, I don't think randomness is a bad thing. I just feel like w- there needs to be a way to guarantee it to happen. Uh, that's all I'm saying is like, there just needs to be a way to guarantee it. If like, 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 like think about this. If you were playing destiny, like, like, tell me how, tell me how this would make you feel. If you're playing destiny and you really want, uh, let's, cause I don't, I don't know how, I feel, like maybe this will show, uh, I'm trying to remember what the exotics were called. Let's say you want the Monte Carlo. I don't know if you know what that gun was. It's one of the exotics. It was one of my favorites when I played for PVP. Um, let's say you want that gun and you keep getting exotics. You keep grinding the nightlies. You keep grinding the raids and you keep getting exotics, but you never get it. Like, do you think it would be fair to say, Oh, if you have 30 exotics, if you have 40, 50 exotics, if you get that many, you can make whatever exotic you want. You can choose at that point. I feel like that's totally fair. Um, in fact, I, I that's fair. I, but do you, would that motivate you? Because to me, I when I think because I've been having a hard time wanting to play Monster Hunter Four some more because I'm reaching this point where in order to progress, I I need new armor and all of the monsters I have to fight are insanely hard and it just it with my limited schedule as an adult that works and has all these all these responsibilities, I don't want to dedicate so much time to this game without being guaranteed this armor set. I it just it irks me to be like. I could literally grind this monster out and fight him 20 times in a row. And not every time am I going to beat him because he's hard. So, you know, maybe 15 of those runs are going to be successful. I'm not guaranteed the parts to make the armor set. You know, and it just, I'm, I just don't know if I want to put in the time. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. Um, Cause like, like again, I'll pose the question. If like, let's say it takes 30 uh, exotics to make any exotic you want would that motivate you to play more than if you're never guaranteed it? You know, like, uh, yeah, yes, most definitely. So, I think it's yeah. the, the whole concept of a drop rate. I do think it poses an interesting juxtaposition with real life in that nothing is guaranteed in real life. You never know what's oh, going to happen man. next. Um, oh man, you're speaking to my it, soul, dude. To turn it. Maybe it's like a bit of a devil advocate thing but like i wonder if that's one of the big driving factors that cause people to chase rng or to chase gotcha is that level of uncertainty right well uh, no, they, they want to be special don't really know what's going to happen right they want to be the people to prove everyone wrong and be like check this out first role i got the character like i'm just different you know like they want to feel i mean it's that's not that's not all it is obviously like Sometimes, like what, like that One Piece gotcha game I play, sometimes I, I don't care. I just want the character because I like the character. I'm like, oh, this is my favorite character. I really want them. I, I just want to have them because I like them. Um, so it's like, but again, you know, especially when it's p- gameplay related, like certain characters are better. So like maybe someone wants this character because of their usefulness, you know? Whereas in Overwatch, you want the skin because it looks cool, right? It's purely a cosmetic thing. It's not going to affect the way the match goes at all. Um, I have my own opinion on skins, and I think they're <laughs> absolutely pointless. But especially <laughs> oh. in a first-person shooter, yeah, it is dude, that's the most so funny, pointless thing. 
That's so funny to me. Um, yeah, cause you're totally right. I mean, in Overwatch, it does change the way your like hands and weapons look. Um, I'm not saying that that makes it worth it, but like you mean the hands and weapons I'm never looking at because I'm always panicking at who's shooting at me, bro. I I don't know. I do I do like my I, I like my skins in Overwatch. I'll be honest, but I I can I can definitely see your point. I, it's definitely not nearly as important. Whereas in multiverses, dude, which you know it's coming back, super hype. Um, but multiverses, He's coming back. Like the skins in that game, I think are awesome. You know, I can't wait. And like same with like Rivals Two. Rivals Two is going all out with the skins. I think skins in those games are way more important. Um, you know, like we I, we can have a whole discussion on like Smash Brothers and how the skins like play a really important role. In fact, a lot of characters deserve better skins, um, and that's a whole other thing. But back back to the RNG thing. So so so, what would you say? Because I don't know if I got your your verdict on it. Like, what do you think? it's okay the way it is do you think there should be a guarantee or do you think that there's another solution like maybe we should just get rid of rng in general like what is what do you what is your stance on this <laughs> uh i think if you're talking specifically about drop rates there still is precedent for it if there's a reason for it to be there um so i've actually learned something about uh, running a business, and I think this works very in tandem with uh, project-based stuff, like a, a isolated video game, just taken as its own product, right? If if there's a reason for drop rates to be there to enhance the game, then yes, I think it's welcome. But if it's there simply because every other company is doing it that way, then no, mm, it's pointless okay. and stupid. So kind of back to our so this kind the of point I'm a, trying to make that like we, we we talked about like things need to be inspired I, I forget which one it was but like it kind of goes back to that where it's like you yeah you need to have that vision and purpose behind it if it's gonna work All right and you from that business insight that I had learned uh the, it was this marketing firm guy so it, it's like I'm learning this information third hand from someone I met at church really so <laughs> basically he runs a moving business the person i was talking to and he has a client that was a marketing consultant for local companies right and he made millions of dollars doing that and when asked what his uh biggest like what was the biggest mistake that projects had and companies had he always he's the first thing he came to his mind was that everyone's just doing what the person next to them is doing because it right. works for them. Yeah. They're not trying anything new. They're not trying anything different. They're not trying to break through into a new piece of land, I guess. They're just not trying uh, yeah. anything new. Yeah. And I think that drop rates as they stand now, there were a lot of games that had drop rates that actually were pretty good from what i understand diablo 2 very good game yeah uh, skyrim good game monster hunter people love monster hunter yes but then it started to get into a pace where it's taken to such an extreme that it is a question of why do these drop rates need to be here do they need to be here like in hogwarts legacy i can't think of a real reason why i needed they need to have drop rates in that game because the whole point of it is to give a harry potter experience right in in that universe so why should i care whether or not i get one robe or a slightly different looking robe it doesn't matter to me right. i'm just there to and, be at hogwarts and and shoot wizard stuff yeah like i maybe there's a counter argument to this but I don't know why RNG games can't have that guarantee system that I'm talking about. And a lot of games these days have actually implemented stuff like that in. Cause I was talking about, we were talking about destiny, which for all I know, destiny actually could have had something like that near the end. I'm unaware if it did, but Diablo four had an issue cause it has some things called uh, Uber uniques, which are, cause they're uniques in the game, which are super rare legendary items that, are fit to specific classes and specific builds. They're like must have items. And then there's the Uber uniques, which are even more rare 
to give context, me and my friends spent an entire Saturday, like over eight hours, right? Like like a full shift at work, grinding one boss that we could, just so you know, we could kill this boss in one hit because our builds were like crazy. We would walk in, the boss would die, we'd get the items, we'd leave, we'd reset the dungeon, we'd just reset, we'd just do that. We fought that boss probably, I want to say at least over like 300 times, at least. And none of us got the item we were looking for. I think at the end, one of us got it. One of us got the item we were looking for, um, which is just insane. Because if you, if you think about all four of us each getting drops, that's like over a thousand chances to get this item. And only like one of us got it. And it's, it's just insane, right? So, but then they, the, because it was so bad in the next season, they actually patched it in where... Now you can, if you have four Uber Uniques, you can dismantle them and turn them into any of the Uber Uniques, kind of like what I was saying. So I'm like, some people are doing uh, okay. this and they are fixing it. And I love that, right? It's, I don't, I just don't see why that, I don't think adding that guarantee is a bad thing. I think it's only a good thing. So I just don't know why people don't do it. Um, and, you know, I, uh, money. But they're losing, like, because, Again, with Monster Hunter, it's like, I would play Monster Hunter more. You know, it's like, they're actually losing my playtime by doing this. You know, it might work on me for the first little bit. Well, so and maybe then they, they... And then they lose me forever, you know? So it's like, you know. So it's know. intended to make money, but it's to the point where it's not going to make money. Right. And then maybe there's that one guy out there that spends like $2,000 on it and it, it makes it all worth it for them. You know, I don't know. Um, but I guess, uh, right, because like, I wanted to just pose the question real quick, because that's essentially what I, what I wanted to talk about. But uh, what about RNG and, like, because board games, card games, uh, D&D, there's a lot of RNG in that, but it, it doesn't feel at anywhere close to what the topic we were just talking about. Um, and I wonder why everyone's okay with card games being random and rolling dice for D&D. Like, I don't think anybody has issues with that. I just wonder why RNG is accepted in that facet instead of the the way we were. Uh, that is an interesting thing because RNG in that essence is mostly a determining factor of whether I succeed in a specific action or not. It doesn't necessarily determine what armor I get. I don't I don't roll for for an armor set in D and D, I just get whatever armor I want because I go buy it as part of the campaign or whatever. Or I design my character with the armor I want. So I think in this case, RNG plays into specifically an action you're taking and not a result of the action. Interesting, and people are okay with that because, like, if I play Magic the Gathering and I draw a bad hand, I could lose the game. But and yet that's not it's not like the RNG is the problem. I, I just feel like that's interesting, <laughs> you know, like imagine playing the, like Skyrim or not Skyrim, but imagine playing like Mario and like there's just a random chance that you get a level or something happens and you lose the, the level or you die and it was out of your control. I feel like people would rage at that, but then you're I playing guess a card in this game case, and it's OK. It's just I guess in this case, you have to make the you have to make the chance enticing enough to take. Is a fighting a thirty minute boss to for, for a chance maybe to get an item that you may need one of seven to get a like Warframe has this problem. <laughs> right, I, yeah. I love Warframe, but like <laughs> I actually played Warframe a lot. Um, but it has this problem where you, you play these 30, 40 minute missions for a chance to maybe get this one yeah. thing. And if you get it, if you get seven of it, then you can make uh, like the legs of an armor. Right. But that then you is... have to do that for the head and the chassis and the helmet and the That's weapon. That's exactly the Monster Hunter you problem. Can plug it That's into That's exactly the thing. what I'm going through in Monster Hunter, bro. Like, that, exactly. Um, so. so, in this case, the chance that you're willing to take is not enticing enough for the time you're putting in. So, like so if you play like Uno or something, the thing that no one cares about if Uno 
like if you draw a bad card or if someone happens to get a skip or the exact card they need and heaven forbid they put a slap a plus four on you which i actually learned you cannot like uno has officially come in and said you can't jump in on those you can't like play a plus two on the person's plus two that they did to you and then push it on to the next guy that's like not a rule specifically in uno everybody does that though. but it's like a universe <laughs> everyone does it yeah it's, it's, it's interesting that yeah. uno came out anyway but the point i'm trying to make is yeah. because your investment level is is you're just there for a good time no one's playing uno to like win a tournament or anything right, but people are playing magic you're just playing to have a good a time you know like but they are playing to it's interesting because when you ask someone to make a perception check or a, a, a role for initiative that doesn't necessarily determine like all you have to do is roll the die one time and then the game progresses or the story progresses or whatever happening right. immediately progresses. What I think you're kind of getting at here with this RNG is that it's not enticing enough for your investment and your investment is very important. Everyone's time is very important to them. Right. And so it's... people are looking for ways to invest that time with immediate, whether or not immediate or not. I think that I kind of just had a seizure with my words, but whether or not the reward is immediate, it matters that the investment of time is rewarding. Right, and I, I, this, the two takeaways I have is the first thing is the, I think those are some wise words of no, I, yeah, I, for I sure. Know. I, I feel like I'm realizing what's going on here because I, I do think it's interesting that like most, if not all, board games are like RNG, like, like based. Like a lot of the you're either drawing cards or you're rolling dices, like for most board games, and that is RNG. Even my board game that I'm designing has has that dice roll. Yeah, RNG or, or both. Stuff. You know, it's like. You play Monopoly, it's got cards and it's got dice. And, you know, it's... But, and like, a game like Risk, you, you might be like, oh, it's it's completely decided who wins Risk. No, r r like, if someone who's really good at Risk will win most of the time. They might not win every time, because it is there is randomness, but... And, like, you, like even in games like Smash, or uh, I'm not sure about League of Legends, because I haven't played it, but there's RNG in those games, too. You know, like, if you're playing against Game & Watch and he gets a 9... Or whatever it is, like Stitch Face, uh, whatever. Um, there is RNG in games that can kind of like sway that, but uh, I think at the end of the day, the RNG needs to feel number one, like it's it's it is worth your time. Like you're saying, it needs to be enticing. Um, and it, I feel like there has to be a level of fairness to it. Like I feel like one of the problems is when the odds feel like they're just completely against you. Um, like it's almost an imp impossible odds or you know, at what you get 10 exotics and it's not the one you wanted, or I fight this monster 20 times and I still don't have it. It's like, really? Like, I feel like the, the odds need to feel like it's in your favor. Um, at least a little bit. And then at the same time, I feel like in board games, your opponents are also subjected to this randomness. And that might be something that's different. Cause like if you're playing a gotcha game, people, can spend a million dollars on the game if they have it and get that guy easy, but I'm not in a position to do that. So that level of fairness kind of goes out the window where it's like, I'm not on the same playing field as someone who spends a lot of money on this game. I'm a free to play player or when in Monster, win. Yeah, or in monster hunter, it's like, uh, this isn't a PVP game. It's a PVE game. So I feel like this is just wasting my time. Because it's not like yeah. the monster has RNG. He doesn't. He doesn't care. It's just me who's losing. I'm the only one losing here. You know, and like, I feel like that's the difference. Oof. Like, when you're playing a board game, if you're playing Uno, everybody has the same, like, circumstances. So when you're losing to somebody, it feels way more fair, I feel like. And maybe that has something to do with it. So uh, maybe it does. But you know who's not losing? is my spot on the train so <laughs> let's let's go grab some seat dude all right sounds good man thanks for talking rng with me uh oh yeah and we'll catch hopefully you guys. we don't roll a bad seat we'll catch you guys in the story dive episode coming out on friday don't miss it 
Don't miss it. Don't miss it. It's coming up.